they bulldozed Rachel Corey in the exact same place where all the watermelons are getting bombed right now. I'm here because I care. I'm here because children everywhere are suffering. Wait a minute, before we get into who she was or what happened to her, can I just give you the plot twist early? Because her and her family are, um, yeah. A 23-year-old American activist stands in front of an Israeli bulldozer in Gaza, March 16th, 2003. The bulldozer drives over her, crushing her to death. Corrie, along with colleagues from International Solidarity Movement, was trying to prevent Israel from bulldozing homes in Rafah. She paid the ultimate price. An Israeli investigation took one month and found no Israeli soldier was to blame, stating the armored bulldozer crew involved in the incident did not see Miss Corrie, who was standing behind the mound of earth and was unable to see her or hear her voice. I know this is like two decades ago, so like the color's a little off, but even I know that's a bright orange f visibility sweater. And like, she has a bull, she has a bullhorn. Like, was your soldier like deaf and colorblind? Uh, I don't think, um, but it can simply be dismissed as an accident. I'm absolutely clear that the bulldozer driver would have been able to see Rachel. Um, it was a clear day, Rachel was standing in open ground wearing a high visibility vest, and the bulldozer, bulldozer driver uh, moved toward her from 20 or 30 meters away um, and absolutely would have had a chance to see her as she stood uh, in, one, in one place, motionless, uh, during that time. Just as the bulldozer got to her, it had gathered up uh, a pile of earth in front of its scoop that was, that was moving in front of it, and she was forced to climb on top of that moving mound of earth. And as she did so, her head uh, moved above the top of the bulldozer blade, uh, and at that time, before she fell down, was only uh, a meter or two meters or three meters, perhaps, away from uh, the head of the driver. I, I don't think you heard what the eyewitness said. So she was standing still and the bulldozer was three meters away from her, pivoted towards her direction and dug into the dirt beneath her and lifted her up. And she had to climb because she was standing on top of the dirt. And when she fell back down, the bulldozer ran over her. Like that's, <laughs> that's literally what happened. You want to add insult to injury? When the blue and white investigated its own army and found no wrongdoing, the army proceeded to celebrate by making pancakes because she was flattened. Like I shit you not, all across the country, pancakes became known as carries. There are just countless ways in which these children are experiencing incredibly difficult things, and I want to support them. This is what she was protesting, by the way. Like, as they were illegally bulldozing watermelons homes, they were targeting the kids with sniper rifles. Like, I hope, after this video, you understand the breadth of how long both the Arabs and non-Muslim people have been fighting the government to free watermelons. Like, they named a street after her before the government tried to bulldoze it. Like, Muslims named a street after a juice person for trying to fight for their freedom. Like, and just look at this app where like your favorite creators that speak Hebrew have also been banned for making videos about a ceasefire. Like this is not a religious fight. It's just some app in government that keep lying to Manny's colored colonists about how terrorists are everywhere when in reality, they're the terrorists. I, I mean, I didn't even get a chance to make a video about this where it's just like the lies just keep piling up where like now there's hummus tunnels in other countries and you're gonna go bomb them too.